Welcome back to Squawk Box. Silicon Valley entrepreneurs often want to shake up industries, but Obvious Ventures wants to do more than that. The early stage venture fund founded in 2014 takes a long-term view and makes investments in companies that tackle some of the world's toughest challenges, such as climate change, healthcare, and education. Its portfolio includes Magic Leap, electric bus startup for Proterra, and notably Beyond Meat, which was, was the first, which was the firm's first public exit. Joining us right now. Can I, we can just say, he's one of the creators of the, the modern internet. Ed Williams is here. Twitter, Andrew. of course. Medium, this is the guy. And then James Joaquin, co-founder of Obvious Ventures. Um, as we just said, oh, Ev is the co-founder of Twitter, uh, CEO of Medium. What, what other fabulous things? What, uh, what, what was the original before the that? The original, Blogger. Blogger, that's what blogger. I was thinking of. Sold to Google in 2003. Yes. So uh, we've got a lot of topics to talk to them about. Uh, but why don't we just start real, real briefly first with the fund and what you're trying to do with it. Great. Well, today's a big day for us. We're announcing our third fund. We're entering our seventh year. And this is a major growth milestone for us. Our third fund is $271,828,182. And how did you choose that number? Well, those are the first nine digits of one of the most important constants in mathematics called Euler's number, universally known as E. Uh -huh. So we like to say E equals OV3 for us with this third fund. Did you, uh, just, did you, ever, do you have investors who said to themselves, like, were there more investors who either wanted to get in at a certain <laughs> number or this, and you said, we can't do it because we need it to actually for it to equal this certain number? Couldn't you have just done 420? Really? You know, we're not a cannabis yeah. fund. We well, don't invest right, there. But right, right. this is a tradition for us. Our first fund was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, your second one was a palindrome. Second one, one was nine, a nine-digit nine. palindrome. And we love to celebrate math and science. It's a lot of the cutting-edge technology we invest in. And so getting our third fund to E it was a lot of work to get our LPs <laughs> to write the right number, right. but we did it. Um, this is the Einstein E, the E equals MC squared E, or? It's named after Leonard Euler, Euler a yeah. Swiss mathematician. Founder of the Houston Oilers, or no? No connection there, a little, okay. bit, little bit older. Uh, Let yeah. me ask you about, uh, one of the things we talk about a lot on the show is private valuations relative to public valuations in this marketplace right yeah. now. And what we've seen over, feels like the, a transition of at least the last year, where there were these very high public or, or private valuations and then came down in the public markets and how you think that's changing the landscape or if it is at all? Well, I think we got it right with Beyond Meat. I right. mean, our, our private valuations were much lower than the public market valuation that we see with that company. That's been a fantastic return for us and a fantastic proof point of the work right. that we do. But to your question, I think Silicon Valley is increasing its focus on profitability. And we invest at the early stage, so we're not public markets experts, but we do focus on making sure that every investment we make, there's a thesis and a path to profitability. And we're seeing more investors focus on that. We're seeing some of the late stage companies start to do some layoffs to reduce right. their burn, to get closer to profitability. Maybe that's in anticipation right. of how they're going to be valued in the public Let markets. me ask you a, a Beyond Meat related question. It relates to the news this morning uh, that Larry Fink has out in terms of <clears throat> refocusing his firm around climate and sustainability and issues like that. He says it's an economic decision, meaning he, 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 this is, he says it's not a political decision. It's not even, a, to some degree, even a science decision for him personally. It's he thinks that the world, as investors, millennials and others, are moving towards sustainable investing. Do you, I mean, obviously that's part of the trend beyond, yeah. beyond me. 100%. How far do you think that goes? And how quickly do you think it happens? Yeah. Well, I think it's happening right now and beyond as a proof point, as James said. But it goes back to our original thesis, which was and we, we don't think of ourselves as impact investors. We think of ourselves as financial investors who are choosing things that are addressing major problems. Because if you figure out how to do that profitably, it's going to be a huge business. And so it's very in line with what Larry is saying. I think it's not just new generations' choices, it's necessity. Mm -hmm. and, and so what, what we've seen with Beyond and I, lots of other uh, portfolio companies, Diamond Foundry mm -hmm. is about lower carbon, you know, diamonds. There's, there's all these kinds of things that people are choosing because they realize there's, there's a better way to solve these problems. But how much of that is a bet? For example, Apple, I'm thinking of a lot of the big, also I was going to say the big Silicon Valley companies that do have big balance sheets that are now moving in this direction in terms of some of the work that they're, that they're doing at cost to them, by the way. Because you see yeah. Apple, for example, now running, I think, all of their operations in the U.S. totally off of carbon neutral. Yeah. 
Well, it's a cost to them, and but there's a there's a bigger equation there. I know in Silicon Valley, for example, employees care a tremendous amount about this stuff. So it's not just your customers, but if you want you want talent that that feels like you're doing the right thing as a company, it becomes a real issue to not do that. And we think high carbon companies are fragile, right? They're, they are at risk of a price on carbon fundamentally changing the economics of their business. If we can flip trillion dollar industries to low carbon, think about food, energy, transportation, resources. A lot of the companies in our portfolio have better economics. When Proterra sells the city of New York an electric bus, it costs less to operate than a diesel bus. Right. So the numbers are just there. Uh, before we let you go, I, have, I just have a couple of social media questions for you. Okay, TikTok, what do you think? It's fun. It's fun? <laughs> Would you use it? Do you use it? I've, I've played with it. I like okay. to understand all, all the new things. It's not my genre. I haven't yet made a TikTok video. I don't think I can compete on Snap. that stage. Snap? I think, I think uh, Evan is one of the greatest product thinkers there is, and I'm sure they're going to come out with lots of more creative things. 